Hi guys, Nigel here with you again, Nigel's Modelling Bench, this time with a kit review. Um, some of you will have seen my review of this little beautiful Quintus Studio interior set yesterday that I got for this kit. Um, and I asked in that if you'd like to see a review of the kit, just comment below. And a lot of you have said yes, please. So here we go. Um, this is the Trumpeter 135th scale Camov. I remember I called it Camaz in here. Camaz, of course, is a truck. <laughs> Camov K29 Helix B. Um, it's got a length of 378.3 millimeters and a rotor diameter of 455 and 370 plus pieces. 35th scale, not for children under three. May differ from image on box, so it could end up looking like a Puma. Um, and we've got full interior details, it says here, which is probably not true because otherwise you wouldn't have to have this. So there we go. Um, but anyway, very funny story behind this. Um, if you want to fast forward for a couple of minutes, please carry on, do so. Very, very strange. A few weeks back, I was looking on eBay at these, uh, where I could get them and the prices I would have to pay from China. Uh, my phone was next to me, it went ping, and I had an email from um, from DN Models, the Bitco over at DN Models, and he said, I've just got the Camov K29 Helix to make window masks. Do you know anybody you might want to buy the kit? I said, that is weird, and I bought it. So here it is. So it's kind of second hand, so I think some of it's going to be open. We shall see. But anyway, um, go around the side of the box here. We've got the CAD images, which I'd rather see images of the real thing rather than CAD images, but there we go. So you can see we've got, looks like we've got pretty full engine detail. We've got pretty uh, full cargo detail there. And then we've got a nice cockpit. And yeah, again, you can see the engines. And then we've got some weapons loadouts here. And you've got some information there about the thing itself. You can pause and have a read of that. Very interesting that um, the project was started in 73. The first flight was in 76. State of Sections was completed in May 79. And production started in 1984. It took them 11 years to get it going. So uh, that was amazing. So you can see on the end of the box is the same sort of thing with the, uh, and the kit number there is 05110. And they go around the other side. Typical trumpeter style. Four different options and not a single word about what they are, who they are, where they're from, what period, anything. I wish they would do that. It's such a shame. And then here we've got all the weapons that you're getting in there. You can see all those. I know nothing about Russian weapons. You can see we've got two decal sheets there and a little sheet of photo etch. And again, this product is not a toy. So, looking in the box, I don't know why I always turn the box over. It doesn't matter if it's upside down, does it? Looking in the box, we have... Sprues and sprues and sprues. Um, here you can see we have the clear parts, which I've already unbagged once um, and had a look at. The main actual fuselage there. We've got some instructions. And then we've got piles and piles of sprues. Absolutely pouring down. Piles and piles of sprues here. We've got some detail parts, which is nice. We've got some weapons there with our rockets and everything. Rotor blades, more rotor blades. More detail parts here. So let's get this all out of these bags and have a look at some plastic. But first, we'll have a look at the instructions and the decals and stuff. So starting off with what we've got in the box, we've got the sheet here, November 22, January 223. So you can see it's very, very recent. It's, uh, what is it today? It's April the 6th today, 2023. So um, yeah, you can see here, we've got the, uh, the Camov here. That's what we've just bought. And then we've got here, Russian destroyer Tazkiant. Taskiant 1940, so that'll, uh, that'll be coming very soon, obviously. And then we've got here an M983 tractor with ANTPY 2X band radar. I think I've already seen that one, actually. Oh, it's a 72nd scale, that's why. I know I've seen it in 35th. And then here in 135th scale, 100% new tooling, we have a Patreon, Patriot Abschramp. So I'm assuming this is the German mobile system for the Patriot system. 100% um, new tooling and you can see in there we're getting decals, masks, B and everything and lots and lots of details about the model there. So looking out for that one if that's, if that's the thing you like. So looking at the instructions, um, typical trumpeter for call out, we know what we're going to get here. Uh, so we've got the call outs there for all the sprues and then more call outs there for the sprues, all numbered as well. And it's telling us here what our unused parts are. And we've got a hexagonal axis, so that's going to be a hexagonal shaft, I'm imagining, for the rotors. So starting off, unusually, we're starting with the engines. So you've got the engine assemblies going together here. 
Looks like we've got some lovely detail with separate um, compressor and turbine blades in there. And then we've got the uh, gearbox assembly going on the side. And then you're going to build the right engine. So it's going to be pretty much the same, just with a couple of small differences, I should imagine. In fact, it looks almost identical. Anyway, um, and then moving on here, we've got the actual cargo bay and cockpit floor all together. And then we're going to build up these panels and everything. We've got some detail to add to put our Quinter Studio set in. And then we've got this sort of, I don't know what the, the system is here, but we've got a main man here in the left seat. And in the right seat, it looks like it might be a weapons guy or something. But he's got like a, a different sort of joystick or control column, whatever you want to call it. Um, and obviously a different set of instruments. But it's telling us here what colour to paint everything. I'm assuming you know, the intermediate blue is going to be like a very light blue. And then the actual Soviet blue H392, I don't think we're going to need. But anyway, so uh, that's all looking good. And then we're adding some more detail here into the uh, onto the pilot side. We're adding his control column, adding a pair of seats, or adding that seat. Um, I was telling us to put that seat in, although it looks like it's there. Um, and then we've got the bulkhead going in, building up two of these seats. If you remember the Quinta Studios, there are four lots of seat belts. So we'll have to wait and see what we uh, get with all that. Don't know where the other seats are going to go. Um, we've got a bulkhead there with the door in. You could have the door open or closed, whatever you want to do. And then we've got some more bits and pieces going in here. Some boxes going into the cargo bay area. And then we're adding the interior wall. So that's a nice touch. We've got separate interior walls. So you can sort of build up an inner module and then skin it with a fuselage. And then over here we're building up the top, um, the engine mount. And then we're adding the exhaust, the engines with their exhaust and the bulkheads and everything. So that's going to look good. Add a bit of wiring in there if you want to, if you want to display them and have them looking good. And then you've got a decal going underneath there. Obviously, we won't need that because we've got the, the Quinter Studio set. And then we're going to add that roof section onto the onto the top of the inner module there. It'll be interesting to see if there's detail on the inside of there. And then we've got the... For some reason, they've got the fuselage halves upside down and we're fitting the doors. Don't quite know where they've got that like that for. And then we've got the right way up and we're fitting them on. And we've got a separate roof panel there going over the top. So that's going to make it into a sort of complete helicopter fuselage. Adding in the um, windscreen wipers. Those bits I talked about in the Quinter Studio set, they are the windscreen wiper motors and they're going to go on to the front. We've got some fans here going on the inside by the look of it. I'm not sure we're going to use those or not. And then we've got what looks like a dashboard there going on the front. Um, and then we've got some lifting eyes or whatever there. Engine intakes, little bits of handles and greeblies and stuff. And then we've got more bits and pieces going on there. We've got a folding door by the look of it, so we can have that open if you want. You've got the PE operating lever for there, so that's a nice touch. I want to use that. Building up the... Are they stabilators or are they tailplanes? What are they? I'm guessing... I think it's got rudders, so I guess they're elevators. I don't know. They're not elevators, are they? I don't know. Those are stabilators with fins and rudders, I guess. And then we've got the weapons beams going there, adding all those in. Building up the undercarriage, looks like it might be a little bit flimsy to be honest. And then front undercarriage going in here, we're building it up there. Um, we've got some PE grills going on back there, a little box going on the back. Some more greeblies, another door, that's the lower end of the door. It's open with the steps on it so you can have it displayed. And then finally adding in what I'm guessing is like a pitot tube or something on the front. And then we've got more photo etch grills going in here, something going on the back there and then a Another cover for the engines there, so you can have that hinged open if you want to. And then we're going to start on this beautiful rotor head assembly. Trumpeter have done an excellent job here. They've allowed us to actually fit the rotor last, so you can build the rotor up, put it on display, and then when you want to store the model out of the way, take the rotor off, and you've got something this wide and this long instead of something this diameter. So that's pretty good. So we've got the rotor head there. Looks fairly simple. Um, not sure what the rotor head's like on the real thing. We'll have to have a look, but looks fairly simple. Um, and then we've got the gear. OK, we've got the gears going in here. So it's actually when you turn the rotor, it is actually going to turn the rotor in the opposite direction. That's amazing. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see if that works and how long it takes to break. <laughs> there you go. And then you drop all that assembly down into there. And that's really, really nice. Well done, Trumpeter. That's great designing. Um, B11 times 3. Not quite sure what that is. Almost looks like a sort of clamp down thing. So anyway, 
And then we've got our weapons here. So we've got the Fab 50 bombs, Fab 250 bombs, Fab 100 bombs, OFAB bombs, uh, grenades, uh, OFAB 100, I don't know what any of this is, uh, ZB 500 bomb, we've got some fuel tanks, we've got some cannon pods, some bombs, cluster bombs, rockets, which is the best bit, and rockets there. So they look great when they're all weathered up and everything. And then here it tells you the options of where you can put all those bombs. And as you can see, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so there you go. So that's the instructions. You've got a nice forward view there. I wonder if there should be... No, there won't be, will there? Because they're counter-rotating propellers, um, blades. They don't need to have the angle for the torque. So uh, it will just be vertical. So I'm sure that's going to be correct. But it's so ugly, it's beautiful, isn't it? Anyway, so that's the instructions looked at. Colour callouts um, come on two A4 sheets here. So we've got um, A here, which is a helicopter. I don't know what period, what regiment, what, even if it was Army, Navy, whatever. I ain't got a clue. Looks like it's probably Navy. So there we go. So there's that one. And then here we've got one which is very, very bright and colourful. Um, that's got Forum Army on the side. So, don't know. Don't know. Not a clue. I just wish they would tell us what they are. They never, Trumpets are used to and they never do now. They give us colour callouts all the way through, but never tell us what all these schemes are for. And then we've got C here, which looks very, very similar to A. Just different colour. All the colour callouts here in Mr. Hobby, um, VA Ho, Model Master, Tamiya and Humbrol. But Mr. Hobby B is your main one because that's the one that's got all the colours. The rest of you can see they're all dotted around. But uh, there we go. And then finally here, version D, which is... Yeah, so, don't know. And then we've got all our bombs here, and you can see we've got all our stencil decals to go on as well, which is really, really nice. So, um, very well done. I just wish they would tell us where they are from. So there we go. Um, something of a bit of a surprise. I received, in the bottom of the box, two of these. <laughs> and these are the mask sets from DN Models. So these are going to be vinyl masks for this kit. Um, exterior and interior, so that's really nice, they're double-sided masks. So we've got canopy windows and wheel paint masks for Camoff K29 Helix B for Trumpeter 05110 and the part number of these is hash, um, yeah, hashtag no, 35827086 and you can get those from dnmodels.com. If you're in the UK, I believe, um, having spoken to Mitko, I believe he is looking at um, a UK distributor, so that would be good news for us because postage is becoming so expensive. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens there. So if you like your vinyl masks, these are going to be the ones to go for. I've got two sets there, so I'll probably have one going spare. Um, and then here we've got our decals. I'm not going to get them out because I don't. Well, I, may as well, I could get them out because the bags are not even sealed. It's got uh, holes in it that to stop people suffocating themselves, I guess. Um, remember that if you're stashing your kits in the loft, if the bag's got holes in it, your decals will probably be destroyed. Any kits I put in the loft, I always take the instructions and the decals out and put them in a folder. So let's get rid of that. So here we have a oh, nicely done trumpeter. They've got the sellotape on here to stop it becoming damaged. So you can cut in there like that and we can see we have some very nice decals. They do look to be beautifully printed, beautifully in register, very, very bright. The colours to my eye at the moment look correct. And obviously you've only got Soviet versions here, Russian versions, whatever. Um, I'm not sure if the Ukraines actually used the KA-29. If they did, I will see if I can get some to count decals and do a Ukrainian one. If not, it'll be one of these. But um, as you can see, very, very crisp and clear, in register, really, really nice. So, uh, if you actually look on YouTube, there's a couple of videos of these things in action and they look quite uh, formidable. Um, they got the, There's an in-cockpit shot from, uh, in, a, in a firing practice. My God, when they let those rockets go. Oof. So here we've got all the cockpit details and everything, and that Forum Army, which is one of the versions. 
And then here we've got all our stencils for all the, um, I believe that's going to be for all the weapons. But again, you can see very, very crisp, clear, sharp and in register. Really, really nice. So um, never really had an issue with Trumpeter decals, to be honest. I have with Hobby Boss, but not with Trumpeter. If you want to go look at my Spitfire Mark V build, go and have a look at that. Oh God, those decals, I could not get them to go down. They were awful. So uh, here we go. So that's that. So we can put those to one side. And then finally here we've got the photo etch. Um, very interesting. You can see on there it's got 2020 trumpeter. So this kit must have been a long time in development. It, it probably got stalled because of the rovids. But um, you can see we've just got a couple of meshes on there. Mesh grills, some bits for the doors here and then some seat belts which we won't be using. So there we are. It's a very simple little photo etch set there for it. So we can put all that to one side over there. So let's have a look at the kit. I'm going to start with the clear parts because when I did get this, I got it out to look at the windows, see how good they were. And Jess got hold of this, as you can see. So um, there we go. And you can see here, oh, there's the, the screen is about to break off. So I'm going to take that off now. I don't want it to break off and then leave a great big splinter through it. That's lucky. There is a splinter there, but it's only gone into the frame. But, uh, this is one of the things you see, if you have multiple injection points on your clear parts, you end up with spider lines. If you have a single part, they break off really easily. And if they break off, they generally leave a splinter. But uh, nice to see here what they've done with the doors. They've got the frame molded in with the clear. So you just mask the window off with your DM models masks and then spray the door. So you don't have to worry about fitting clear parts into doors and stuff. Here we've got some windows. Um, Looks like a head-up display thing there. But uh, yeah, various lights and windows and stuff. But as you can see, really, really clear. If you look through there, you can see there's no distortion whatsoever. So amazing. And the actual windscreen itself, this is very interesting because I've been wondering. Yes, we do. There are holes. So when we fit these windscreen micro motors, we can put a piece of rod through there and mount them onto that. Remember those those rods, those those sort of motors, they sit like if you can imagine, they sit right in the glazing. So they're going to look absolutely awesome because it's something you wouldn't normally see as parts attached to the glazing. Now, as you can see, again, this is lovely and clear. It's got tiny scratches on it there, but it's lovely and clear. And on the sides, unfortunately, there is a bit of distortion, but it's going to be unavoidable because if you look at the shape of the glazing, it's kind of, it's bulged in the sides. So that's going to be very difficult to make that non-distorting in this scale. So, um, but uh, very happy with that. I'm not sure if that's just a bit of dirt on there. I'm hoping it's just a bit of dirt, but uh, anyway, so I'll put that to one side. I'm going to put that away a minute. Put that in a bag so it can't get scratched. And then we can uh, we can push forward. Always take care of your clear parts, guys. So I can go over there. We'll wrap that up. Like that. And I'm going to cut that off of there because there is going to come a time where seeing that is going to uh, not make me happy. I think you all know what I mean. You can put that back in there. As I say, protect your clear parts, guys. You don't just want to leave them lying around on the bench. You never know what you're going to put down, what you're going to drop, what you're going to splash, whatever. So there we go. So that can go in there like that. And that's not going to get affected by anything being put on it. Right, so that's that out of the way. Let's have a look at some plastic. So we'll start with the fuselage. Is it a fuselage or a body? I always call it a fuselage. It's probably a body. Oh, get off. Right, so here we have a lovely sprue, lovely plastic, typical trumpeter. Looks a little bit darker than normal trumpeter, to be honest. Um, but it's beautifully molded. Very, very nice indeed. Unfortunately, it has all recessed rivets. And I'm sure they should be raised. So come on, trumpeter, pull your finger out. You're uh, behind the game on that one. I'm sure those rivets should all be raised. I uh, have to do a bit of reference checking. So you've got raised rivets on that panel there. So maybe I'm wrong. 
got nice stiffeners around there. But the overall shape of the thing, if you're into your fish, I think it looks like a crebensis. <laughs> there we go. So you can see on there beautiful surface detail, even though it's recessed. It's lovely. And uh, there's going to be no detail on the inside, obviously, because it's got interior walls. So we don't need detail on the inside. But it looks like, yeah, it's been slide moulded. That's what this big gap in the middle is for. So you've got, it's been slide moulded. So we've got a seam line there to sand out, which is nothing. And we've got a seam line I can't even see a seam line on the bottom. Yes, there it is. So the seam line is there, so it's probably, yes, yeah, going along there. It's going along that panel line. Wow, lovely bit of moulding. That is beautifully moulded. Really, really nice. But it's, it's, it's plastic seems harder than normal trumpeter. But, uh, yeah, very nice indeed. So it should build into a beautiful model, this, because as I say, it's so ugly, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Right, next bag here, which is already open. We have, this is the interior uh, roof section, so we have got interior detail in there. Not sure if this would have just been canvas or if it should be ribbed or something. And then we've got the instrument panel, the overhead console panel detail on there. There's the front section there, with the door on the front. We've got the engine bulkheads there. This is the roof over the front of the uh, cockpit. Got the side opening door there. There's a rear bulkhead um, and that side opening door there as well. So uh, some little hooks and stuff down there. But it all looks very nicely done. No flash, very crisp, very sharp. And it feels hard. It's, it's nice. It feels, the plastic feels good. It feels good. So there we go. So um, you want to see that console panel there close up. Um, as I say, that's going to get completely covered in Quinta Studio stuff. So when you build one of these with that, you need to make sure you have a mirror looking up into the cockpit because otherwise you won't see it. Here's another bag here. We've got some interior parts. So these are, uh, that is, is that part going under the front? I can't remember now. That's the top of the engine covers. We've got another couple of side doors there. We've got bulkheads here. Again, recessed rivet detail on them. And that's going to basically go onto the back of that. So that's your cockpit bulkhead. Again, you've got Quinter Studio bits to go on there. You've got the door interior there, which is very nice. We've got some bottles and some controls on there. And there's those beautiful little, um, those little fans that are going on the inside of the windscreen. They don't need to be replaced, do they? They look lovely. It could be thinned out a bit with a bit of sanding, but they do look very nice. And then, of course, here we've got our interior side panels and we've got some square ejector pin marks in there. You can see and some oil. So we'll have to give this a wash, but uh, they shouldn't be too difficult to cover up. Um, I'm not even sure if you're going to see them, really. Yes, you will, because that door there is opposite them. So you want to get those sorted. Um, we've got some ejector pin marks on there, but we, yes, we've got an interior panel, so that doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, the ejector pin marks on there are going to be hidden, obviously. And again, here we've got those square ejector pin marks in there, which, I don't know, you probably could float some Mr. Service in there and get rid of them. Or even that maybe there should be a, like a cloth cover over there. You could put some tin foil over there or something and paint it. But research, research, research. But, uh, all the pipework details in there. All nicely done with some careful painting it will all look stunning really really good so that's the third sprue we've looked at or well, the fourth including the clear and here we've got a bag of sprues which has got some protective foam on it which Mitko hasn't opened so there we've got some there's our rotor head assemblies there, so that's what the blades are going to hang off. I hope they're going to be strong enough. And then we've got all bits of actuators and stuff. This looks like it's all rotor head, to be honest. And then this is the upper panel. No, this is the floor panel, sorry. So there's your cockpit floor, and that's your cargo floor. And you can see they're on there. They've beautifully moulded the rails and everything that they put stuff on and clamped down to and everything. So really, really nicely done. And under the foam, we have some 
some detailed little parts in there as you can see and I'm just interested to see about this gear mechanism thing which seems quite gimmicky there you've got a gear mechanism in there so when you turn the rotor one will go one way and the other one will go opposite cool <laughs> if you like playing with your models but uh, yeah you can see the rotor detail it looks a little soft to be honest it could have been a bit sharper but um and it also looks like it might be quite weak we shall see but, uh, time will tell another bag here which is completely covered in foam and it goes open this one so let's have a look at what's in here maybe Mick has done a review of this I don't know um, maybe he was just having a look at it but uh, that's all our engine detail and our wheel detail that's very interesting the wheels are in two halves and as you can see they've got pins and holes and they're done in such a way that you can only put the wheels together one way but there's no, it doesn't matter which way they go. So, because there's no radial features on them, it's strange. And they've done the same on the front wheels as well. Strange. Anyway, uh, we've got our exhaust there in two halves, we've got some weapons pylons there, engine themselves, the, the uh, units for the sides. Got our, blimey, look how much oil there is on there, it's soaking, it's dripping wet. You know, when people say there's no oil on kits. Look at that part there, can you see how shiny it is on the end? Gone, that's oil. See it on my finger shining away. So, um, yeah, when people say there's no release agent on kits, they are wrong. Got some lovely little fine molded parts there. Uh, again, you can see all the oil on that tyre. Look at that, it's soaking wet. So, um Beware. Very nicely done. So we've got some seats there. I don't remember seeing another pair of seats, but in the Quinta Studio set there is enough seat belts for four seats. So there must be two seats going in the back somewhere. We shall see. Put that one away. I uh, won't look at that one yet. That's weapons. That's weapons. Here we have two lots of rotor blades. Hopefully. Yes, they are. They're left and right handed um, and you can see they've got the sag built into them. We'll just open one of these up. You see the, ro the rotor blades, again, they're oily, they're wet. Look at, the, look at all the oil on there. Can you catch that in the light, Nigel? Come on. That is absolutely soaking wet. Um, yeah, really, really nicely done. However, I'm not really convinced that these, look at these mounting points, these rotor blades, are they going to actually hang in there? I mean, bloody hell, tiny little contact area. So, you know, when you look at what ICM have done with the Sky Crane, and they've got that great big slot to slot the blade into to support it. Ooh, I'm not sure that's going to hang out there. We shall see. And there's that little gear for your contra-rotating blades. So, um, yeah, nice they put the sag in them, isn't it? Look at that, lovely. So make sure you get them the right way out, that's all. If you're having it in flight, you could probably put them upside down because they probably sag upwards in flight. Sag upwards? No, lift upwards. Go on, go in. So that's our two lots of rotor blades. You can see on that one we've got the, the other gear, the contra-rotating bit. Uh, here we have some more greebly bits. I must say it's beautifully moulded this. So here we have our pylons, we weapons pylons. As that box that's going under the back, I'm not quite sure what that is. We have our undercarriage here, looks, which looks fairly weak also. I have to be careful with that. Um, and then we've got all our bits and pieces there for is that undercarriage or weapons I'm guessing it's undercarriage and weapons <clears throat> oh that's our exhaust I thought that was exhaust I saw earlier and there's your exhaust outlets that are made in one so you don't have any seams to deal with on there just a mold seam around the edge um, again recess riveting 
all beautifully done. Looks like a very nice kit, doesn't it? But, um, I mean, it could probably benefit from having a brass rod down through there, perhaps, I don't know, or even just, just on the end. Because it, it, it just looks like it wants to snap off. And look at that undercarriage leg. It's, it looks very weak. Although I suppose it's got a support coming off it. Which, you know, something you have to be very careful with when you're moving the model around, I think. Here we go here. So here we've got the... <clears throat> the... Um, cockpit part by the look of it. So this is what a lot of you are going to be interested in. So we've got the main instrument panel there, the centre console there, we've got the side consoles there moulded into like the dash panel. So uh, that's all very nice. We've got some more pylons there, slide moulded. So you've got the mountings in the bottom. We've got some fairings here with some grill detail in, lots of steps, hand rails, grab rails, whatever you want to call them. Engine intakes with a very finely moulded mesh on the front of there, you can see. So that's all very nice. Looks lovely. This detail on here is very nice indeed. It'd be a shame to sand all that off. But, uh, it'd look better with the Quinter Studios than it would with the Trumpeter Decor. You've got the control column there and you've got the other control column there. So um, I need to do some research on this because I know nothing about it. I know nothing about any Russian helicopters, but it seems weird that you've got two guys up front with a different task. But then when you think of an Apache, you've got two guys up front with a different task. When you look at a Huey, you've got like two pilots, haven't you? Sat next to each other. So, these are going to be our fins. Again, recess river detail, I'm sure it would have been raised, I'm sure of it. So that's going to be our fins, there's our rudders, no, nope, that's the fins, that's the rudders, and that's going to be your stabilators. So, all very nice and crisply moulded, with some lovely, lovely surface detail, but, as I say, I'm sure it should be raised, I'm sure of it. I mean, you could always add raised rivets if you want to, but it will drive you around the bend. That's weapons, that's weapons, and that's weapons. So here we have <clears throat> a double bag, a double sprue bag, should I say? Not a double bag. So we've got, I don't know what they are, but this is old stuff. This says 2003, so this is obviously a generic Russian weapon sprue. You can see there all your weapons, even though it's 2003, you can see you've got some nice detail on there. But, um, Bit dated really when you compare it to the Takam Apache which has all new weapons and all photo etch fins and everything um, and the Takam Apache is actually cheaper than this as well so worth bearing in mind <clears throat> but if you want one of these this is the only game in town and we've got two of those so very nice and you're gonna end up with lots and lots of spares and that is quite weighty as well that sprue and then here we've got Another two sprues in one bag. Again, this is probably going to be generic weapon sprues. And I've got the um, Trumpeter FA-18E, and it's more bloody weapons than kit. So here we have bombs, rocket launchers, rocket launcher backings there. We've got something out. These are more bombs. Um, again, this is saying, yeah, this is for the MI-24. So uh, spare weapons for your MI-24 there. But uh, it's all nice. It's not, you know, it's not bad. It's not, uh, it's not up to the latest technology, but it's um, it's perfectly usable, weatherable. I'm sure it'll look absolutely great. And then finally, we have a couple of sprues here again. More weapons, probably generic. And what's this one saying? This one doesn't say anything, so this one might be particular to this kit because it has got mounting rails and stuff on it. Itchy hand a minute. So there we go. So uh, very nice indeed. Definitely be using those because they look lovely. The video I saw, you can actually see them loading those rockets in and it looks like they're sort of silver sticking out the back. But, uh, yeah. Very nice indeed.
very nice indeed. And I said finally, but there is one more little thing we have to look at. There we go. There's our little hexagonal shaft. It's not only going to give us lots of strength in the rotor head, but it's also going to give us the contra rotating bit. So very nice. Thank you, trumpeter. So um, overall, it seems like a very, very nice kit. Um, beautiful detail. Uh, you know, not up to not up to the standard I've seen on some stuff like the Tacoma Apache is just out of this world compared to this. But this is perfectly acceptable. And as I say, if you want one of these, it's the only game in town. And it is going to look absolutely stunning when built, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, my biggest concern is the Rotor Red. It's, uh, it looks, just look at that again. I mean, we've got, that's the actual part that the blade's going to fit into there. As you can see, you've got like a cutout and a hole. And then the end of the actual blade is there. So that little pin and that little bit of plastic is going to slot into there. This, this blade is going to hang on that. And it's just, I don't know, it's just going to want to come out, isn't it? Maybe drill into there, put a piece of 0.5 brass wire, sort of 10 mil to 15 mil in, and do the same on there, and that'll stop it. But um, it's just going to want to break there all the time, I think. But we shall see. It may, may be all right. Maybe I'm fussing over nothing as usual. But um, anyway, but it does look nice. And we've got some lovely surface detail on there. Accuracy, I don't have a clue. Uh, I know that because of the Quinter Studios, I know there's a couple of bits missing in the cockpit. But other than that, it seems like a really nice kit. So there we go. Thank you for watching. This has been the Trumpeter Camov, not Camaz, Camov KA29 Helix B kit number 05110 and uh, yeah I think I will probably build this because Quinta Studio were good enough to send me that set and they've now asked me if they want some more if they want me to send some more they've now asked me if I want them to send some more so that's really good of them because um, I do really really like them uh, but anyway yeah those rotor blades mm. Mm. we shall see Right, thank you for watching guys, I'll see you all soon with part 7 of the Sky Crane build and uh, there's a quick little sneak preview of what we're up to. Thanks for watching guys, see you all soon, bye for now.